SpaceX's Space Force versus China's space program. Let's dig in. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time today. We have a little bit of fireside. That smokiness, so good, so good. Hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video, taste the technology day. We're gonna be talking about technology when it has to do with our government as well as China and our military and how space and military seem to be intertwining as one these days. It is getting to be crazy. There is a space race going on that only happened way back in the late 60s, right? With the advent of a rocket that would actually put a man on the moon. It was unbelievable that we actually did that in 1969 and we did it with slide rules, not with computers or AI. Amazing, and we haven't been able to do it since. So hopefully we can do it sooner than later. But I wanna get into this story. I was reading a story over on Space News and it talked about what is going on between China and the US when it comes to space and how we have found that the Chinese are becoming more and more advanced every single month that goes by. And as we can see, every single month that goes by with SpaceX, there seems to be some type of slowdown or regulatory, some type of mess or loopholes or being drugged through the mud or something that is stopping SpaceX from launching, for example, the Starship in my personal opinion, needs to stop. But this story kind of puts like a bow on it by highlighting one of the latest satellites that are now in orbit from China. Anyways, I wanna get into this and then I'll give you my commentary on it. And then of course, I wanna hear from you down below. What do you think about this? What do you think? So before I get into it, some housekeeping, I just wanna say if you enjoy this video, even in the least, throw it a thumbs up, that'd be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're not, if you are, thank you so very much. Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. Also, if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a little thank you button right down here. Give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, they're free. Go to jcristina.com forward slash books. And if you want more Starlink content or content similar to this, I put together a playlist over here, about 245, 250 videos I've put together in the last 28 months. Go check them out. There's a lot of good stuff over there. Helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to buy, what not to buy, why. This channel is always about the why behind everything. Anyways, guys, let's get into this article. Once again, I wanna hear from you after. It starts out by saying, as China expands its presence in orbit, the US Space Force continues to express concerns about Beijing's advancing satellite capabilities. The latest cause for alarm is China's development of imaging satellites in geostationary orbit. Keep that in mind, geostationary orbit, not low Earth, geostationary orbit. That's a, that's a lot more expensive than low Earth orbit. I'll get into that in just a second. China, to be sure, has operated optical image satellites in GEO for nearly a decade. Still, the capabilities of these earlier satellites are limited compared to China's latest additions. One that has caught Space Force's attention is an advanced optical imaging satellite launched in December called the Yogang-41 with an estimated resolution of 2.5 meters. 2.5 meters, what is that, like seven and a half feet or something? That is amazing. Remember, that is from a geostationary satellite, 36,000 kilometers above Earth. What is that, 22.4, 22, let's call it 22,000 miles off Earth. Resolution, down to 2.5 meters. Unbelievable. It significantly improved over previous geo-optical satellites capped at 15 meter resolution. So the old ones were 15 meters compared to 2.5 meters. That is amazing. That is not just a doubling. That's like a quadrupling of the resolution. Absolutely amazing. And that is why we are seeing concern here by the US government and SpaceX's Space Force, which is the government's arm of let's call it Starlink, let's say. 
Anyways, it continues. This level of visual fidelity would allow China to spot vehicles, aircraft, and vessels across wide regions. Another is a geo-based synthetic aperture radar, or an SAR, imaging satellite that can see through clouds and darkness. Paired with the optical resolution of the Yogong 41 satellite, China now potentially has persistent visual and radar surveillance over strategically important areas like the Indo-Pacific. That's a problem. That is a problem. This has defense officials worried. Chief Master Sergeant Ron Lurch, intelligence specialist at the Space Systems Command, said these new satellites are a quantum leap in capabilities for tracking and targeting. Quote, Paired with the data from the Chinese surveillance satellites, the Yogong-41 could provide China with unprecedented ability to identify and track car-sized objects throughout the entire Indo-Pacific region and put at risk numerous U.S. and allied naval air assets operating in the region. While most remote sensing satellites operate in low Earth orbit for cheaper access and better resolution, it's notable that China chose to invest in a far more expensive geostationary spacecraft stationed at 22,000 miles above Earth. Once again, 36,000 kilometers. Potentially problematic for the U.S. military is that an optical sensor like the Yogong 41, in certain circumstances and conditions, could spot stealth aircraft designed to be undetected by radar. Not stealth anymore, right? Oh my God. The Chinese government said that these satellites were designed mostly for civilian use. <laughs> oh my God. However, the U.S. military has cast doubt on those claims given the lack of transparency surrounding China's space activity. No kidding, they're not going to tell you what they're doing? Are you going to tell them what you're doing? I mean, come on, it's just stupid. Quote, going forward, the Pentagon should consider that China might be able to detect and track aircraft even though they're designed to evade radar. Yeah, because they are tracking visually. It is not using radar. It is actually visually going to be able to track down to 2.5 meters. Like I said, six, seven feet resolution. So yeah, even if you have a stealth plane that's flying overhead, that is cloaking itself. It doesn't matter, it can't cloak itself visually. I mean, at least right now. So you're gonna be able to see the thing zipping through the sky, visually. <sighs> Quote, relentless advances in Chinese surveillance capabilities could soon produce an Indo-Pacific region where there is no place to hide. You're not going to be able to move troops. You're not going to be able to move planes. You're not going to be able to move trains and buses and automobiles and boats and whatever the hell else you want to move because they're going to see it. That's just it. So you're going to have to figure out another way. Maybe glitter. Look it up. It is no surprise that the U.S. military and Army's new guidance on space operations released January 8th recognizes the likelihood that American forces and allies will operate under conditions of continuous surveillance. Yeesh. While it may not be possible to conceal activities entirely from satellite observation, U.S. forces on the ground may have to devise techniques to introduce confusion. Yeah, that's kind of like playing like the shell game, right? Where exactly is the marble or where is the ball? And you're kind of moving it around. The same thing that they do with presidents, where you'll have like a motorcade of like five or six cars that are all identical and you don't know which one he's in and they kind of shuffle around a lot, right? It makes sense. The article finalizes with two quotes from the January 8th conference. It says, quote, critics may dismiss that Space Force's warnings about China's progress in space as alarmist, but Space Force needs to keep talking about this because all branches of the armed forces would be impacted by what happens in space. It is very easy for the space community to talk amongst themselves, he added, but this conversation needs to be extended across the Pentagon and the armed services to better prepare for an era where space dominance correlates with military supremacy. Once again, if you do not have dominance in space, you're not going to be able to have military supremacy on Earth. That's just where we're going now. 
And we need to understand that. And I feel like, I don't know, the last X number of years, you can tell me how many years you know of, things have just been going like into the toilet. You know, looking at this through my eyes, my perspective, I was a moon baby, right? When I was born, we were landing on the moon. 1969, everyone was watching glued on their TVs. Their TVs were black and white back then. People thought that they were color, but no, color didn't come out until the 70s, right? And most of, or the majority of TVs, even in the 70s, were black and white because people didn't have the money for the brand new color TVs. That all being said, people were stuck to their either their black and white TVs in 1969 or to their radios, listening to us or watching us land on the moon. The sense of patriotism throughout the US exploded. There was flags flying on every single house. Now today, if you fly a flag in some communities, they'll tell you to take it down because it's too big or too ugly. But if you fly certain flags that might not be the US flag, I'm not gonna tell you which one you can speculate, that's okay if you fly those, but not the US flag. So I feel like patriotism just seems to have just been withering on the vine, so to speak. I don't know what has happened. And this is the same thing not only has happened with our society, but with the people that we hire. The people that we see that are in government today, I feel like they're batting for the other team half the time. I don't see them as actually trying to help us. Either they're helping themselves, helping their pocket, or helping other countries. There was a period of time when the US came first. Yes, we did help others throughout the entire world. Sometimes we shouldn't have, but we did anyways. But it was always the US first. Now, I feel it's not even US first, it's like US 10th, right? We're like way down the chart somewhere. It's just, I don't know, things have just changed. Patriotism. What happened? The sense of pride. What the hell happened? What is going on? I just don't understand. I really don't understand. I was watching a movie last night. I think it was called like Last Night or something about nights. And it was like feudal times and how the main protagonist ended up going against like the emperor or whatnot. But their community stuck together. All right. There was a sense of pride. Right. You died for your region, your country. The majority of young folks today don't want to have anything to do with the military. They don't want to fight for our country at all. Why? Because they hear how bad we are, how awful we are. And I think this media representation of the U.S. taints the society and definitely taints our young children. So they don't believe or they don't feel pride in their country. They feel contempt for it. We can just look at colleges today. But... I digress. Coming full circle. Do you believe that U.S. space dominance does correlate with U.S. military supremacy? I do. What say you? Do you think that we should allow people like Elon Musk and SpaceX to continue to test without a ton of regulations and dragging it through the mud just because you don't like the guy? I do. Because I can tell you one thing, when President Obama shut down the space program and then Bush finalized it, well, it was the end of an era. And for us to be able to get our astronauts and our cargo to the ISS, International Space Center, to do that, we had to go and get a ride share from the Russians. We had to literally take our stuff and our people to Russia to launch into space. Can you believe that? After being a country that lands on the moon, we shut down our space program. The idiocy. Who would even think such a thing? I mean, I don't know. I, I just, am I old? Am I just, am I not seeing this right? What do you think? I think that was the dumbest ever. It caused a vacuum. And then who filled the vacuum? Elon Musk, SpaceX, right? He said, hey, you don't have a space program? I do. I will get your astronauts and all of your cargo to low Earth orbit. And he did it. When he said he would do it, he did it. Within a month, they had their astronauts and their payload, their cargo up to the ISS. So now he is basically running our space program. <laughs> like it or not. So they don't like it, but what are you going to do about it? 
Are you going to cut off your nose to spite your face? And that's exactly what these people are doing. I think it's just ridiculous. Like I said, I think patriotism needs to come back. I think that you should be happy with your country. Are we right in everything that we do? No. Are we perfect? No. But you know what? Have some damn pride in your country. Man. And when we see that our government doesn't have pride, the people that we hire into our government doesn't have pride and is literally batting for the other team all the time, maybe it's time to just get rid of these people, right? I don't care what side of the fence you're on, anyone that you see that doesn't have patriotism, they should just be canned. That's my personal opinion, all right? What are your thoughts? Obviously, you know mine. Down below, let's have this conversation. Once again, if you enjoy the content, even at least consider throwing it a thumbs up. That would be awesome. And head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the many years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it. I'm out of here. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all. Bye.